there have been there have been a couple questions that I have come up a few times um, about how to do the hashing. Um, so there's a there's a type of hashing called um, uh, multiplicative hashing, which I describe in the first part of the lecture notes, the PDF file on the uh, locality sense of hashing. So I, I, I state in the assignment um, you should use uh, uh, multiplicative hashing, um, but I don't re-describe it in there, but if you look at the locality sense of hashing lecture notes, you can find um, the, uh, on the details on how to do that. Um, so if you have any other questions on the homework, generally if you ask Jan, if you send an email to her, or her office hours were this morning, you'd help her be stopped by. I'm sure she should be able to um, help you out with any questions. Um, so, let's see, today we start the next section of the class on clustering. Um, so, who has not heard of clustering before? Um, so, everyone's heard of clustering before. Okay, good. So, um, so um, I, I think I asked this, um, I guess, the first day too. So, so uh, um, who, uh, um, so who's heard of um, K means clustering? Um, so, um, and so some people have not heard of K means clustering. Uh, so K means clustering is probably the most kind of famous form of clustering. We'll deal with that on Wednesday. Today we'll talk about um, hierarchical clustering, which is probably even um, simpler than the K means clustering. And has more structure, but it is going to be generally um, going to be a little bit slower. Um, so, so the thing about clustering is um, it's it's probably one of the topics that people most think of when they think of data mining. So we should definitely spend some some time on it. And the next um, three lectures will be on clustering, um, but. The other thing about clustering is that it's a very broad uh, topic. There are lots of ways to define what you mean by clustering, what your objective is, and how to try and find a clustering. And even, you know, uh, so, and it's, so in, not all these ways are very well defined. Um, and, and, but even though there are a lot of them, there are, there are a lot of right ways that are doing it, but there, these right ways are different. It depends on where your application is. There are lots of different, different situations where you want to do a clustering, and there are lots of techniques, and you need to fit the right uh, uh, technique to the right uh, problem that you have. And so we'll talk about three main types of clustering. Um, um, the first will be hierarchical. Um, <coughs> um, the, uh, um, the first will be um, higher cocoa clustering, then um, assignment, um, based clustering, and so this will include, um, so this is the class that includes the k-means type of clustering, and, we'll and I think at the end of today we'll actually get one instance of this, and then the third will be um, spectral, um, spectral clustering. And so spectral clustering is best to find on a graph, so we'll, I'll, I mentioned graphs a couple times, so I'll, I'll redefine graphs and how you think about them and how you do clustering on them at this point. Um, the other theme is that the hierarchical clustering, as we'll see, is really a form of um, bottom-up clustering, where you start with small things and you build into a larger structure, where the spectral clustering is top-down. You start with pretending everything is one big clustering and kind of um, bring it into smaller parts. Um, and the assignment-based is, is not really either of those. It's something where you just kind of define um, Clustering kind of do. Um, so we'll see these three different types. So these kind of most clusterings 
um, will fit into one of these categories. They will mainly fit into um, the general techniques we'll discuss. And so I'll try and discuss kind of different variations that you can take these and you hope to get a landscape of, um, of the different types of clustering algorithms. And we'll try and touch on some um, newer techniques um, that have been developed maybe even in the past uh, five or 10 years for clustering, which work uh, uh, much better at larger scale um, and can find clusters of um, kind of uh, more interesting ways of defining clusters. And we'll touch on some of the variations of the spectral clustering as well when we get into the um, social network analysis and graphs. Um, so, but we'll define the, the main type of this now and then some more ways in defining uh, um, communities, which is maybe a slightly different problem towards the end of this semester. Um, so, it, it's possible I could really spend, I'm only spending three lectures on clustering, right? I could probably spend a quarter or a third of the class going to different clustering algorithms. But, you know, I, I, I think this is not really the right way to spend the time because there's, there's kind of this, I'll, there's been a lot of work on this and one kind of theme has come through. Um, so if data is um, cluster, um, clusterable, um, then most algorithms work well if it is not clusterable um, then most um, um, most if not if not all um, algorithms um, do not work well. So, so uh, I'll try and loosely define clustering in a, um, in a next, but, but the clustering, basically anything you try is going to work pretty well if the data has clusters in it. If the data does not have good clusters, then you can try all sorts of algorithms, but not really, pretty much, nothing is going to work well. There's some area in between where there are clusters, but they're kind of harder to find, and you need some more advanced techniques, and then you may need to tune things. Um, but, but otherwise, the important thing is to really is to worry about the modeling of the problem and using an algorithm that works fast instead of worrying about um, tuning the, the clusters optimally, because if it's clusterable, you'll be able to find things with, it, with pretty much anything you use. Um, the question is finding things that makes, makes sense according to how you're measuring the data, choosing the right distance function, and so forth. Um, okay, so this is, this is the still been a little bit abstract. I haven't even defined uh, what it means to be clustering yet, so let me try and do that now. Um, so we're going to start with a, a set um, X and um, some distance um, D, which is defined um, on, on X. Um, right, so it takes two elements of X and it gives you some value um, that's not negative, right? So this we have some distance function. And then um, what the clustering um, and so there are going to be other forms of clustering, soft clustering, ways of modeling data in other ways, but um, I'll define this as known as um, what this is actually known as a hard clustering. Um, but a, a clustering is um, is a um, partition um, um, it's a, so it's a partition into set um, where each CI is a um, it's going to be a subset of X so it contains the objects in X, and um, and 
um, H C I um, C J for I not equal to J um, has C I intersect C J equals the empty set. So the two sets don't have anything in common, right? So um, and and also the union of I equals one to K of of all these sets is going to be equal to X. So it's going to be taking a set of objects and breaking it down into these pieces. Um, so this is a cluster, right? So it's a partition of the data, right? So if you have um, some set of data points, it could be that these data points are x, this is going to be one clustering, this is another clustering, and this is the third clustering. So, so if you, if you don't have a hard, if you don't say this is a hard clustering, then you might not have this property here. So this, then if a cluster can be, if a point can be in multiple of the elements, and you say this is a soft clustering instead. Um, and then maybe you have weights, it's, it's maybe it's one half in one set, one half in another, or maybe three quarters in one, one quarter in another. Um, so, and then, you know, um, this, so this is the basic um, framework you want, and you don't, sometimes you know this parameter k of how many sets you want, in this case k was three, um, in some cases you don't, and you need to try and figure out how many subsets you And so, the, um, so the, there are many ways of saying how, how good is a clustering. Um, Is a, um, a and so, um, th th um, th th in in general, there seem to be two sorts of properties uh, um, that you want a, a good clustering to have. Um, um, the first one is the width, and it says that. Um, Um, for all, um, let's see, for all clusters, um, and and for all um, x i, x j, and c, that d x i x j is small, right? So what this is saying is, if you look at all these distances inside the cluster, you want all these distances inside to be small. And then the other key property that you want um, is the split. And that says um, for all pairs of clusterings, C1, uh, C and C prime, um, and um, for all X in C and X prime in C prime, the distance X and X prime is large. So this is going to be, if you look at these two clusters, you look at all these distances, um, and so this is the split, and you want these distances uh, um, to be large. So you want a cluster itself to have things which are close to each other, and two clusters that have things which are far away. Um, and so sometimes if you just if you just optimize one of these two things, the clustering may not end up um, you know end up end up working well, or the function you're trying to optimize and your clustering is not going to be very stable. Um, but generally, you want both these properties, so you should try and keep both of them in mind when, when considering a clustering algorithm. Um, yeah, so, 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 so hopefully all this is simple and, and all this makes sense. Um, 
there are any questions, anything, please, please ask me. Um, so, okay, so this, um, so this is clustering in the, um, the most general sense. So now we're going to talk about, you know, the first topic clustering, um, hierarchical. I can spell that properly. Um, hierarchical um, cluster. Um, so, who's heard of hierarchical cluster before? Uh, so maybe just a few people. Okay. So, um, it's pretty simple. So, um, so, um, Um, so here's the basic algorithm. Um, so put each x and xi and x um, in a um, put it in a separate cluster. Um, Call it CI, so I'll, I'll have a running example at the same time. Um, so start with each of these points, put these in, in their own cluster. Call these CI and CJ and merge um, CI and CJ into one um, cluster. Um, so this is it. And so, and so there are um, So there are lots of variations of this, right? So, and the first thing you start with these, these, these uh, maybe some points are close enough. You find two points which are the closest, and you merge these together into the same, same clustering. Um, but now you say that uh, these two points are close enough. You merge them together in the same cluster. These two are close enough. You merge into a cluster. These are close enough for two cluster, and, and maybe now um, no two clusters are close enough, and you would stop. Yeah. It, it seems like a tough, tough um, problem of this is determining what to define as a cluster, like how what the length is between two nodes. Is that something that usually is experimented with to find a data set? Um, yeah. So, um, so the next thing I was going to talk about is there are two kind of things. Uh, um, that I didn't explain here, right? So I didn't explain what it means to be close enough and what it means to be the closest, right? I had to define a distance in between clusters yet, right? Once I define a distance between clusters, then you know I can define what close enough means or, or what the closest is. It's the smallest distance, and then the close enough has some sort of there's some value at which if the distance is below. Um, if, if distance is below this, they're close enough. If it's above it, it's, it's greater than that. Right? So I need to define the key to this is the distance between the clusters. Right? So, so, um, so this is exactly the right question. Right? So, um, so, so how do I define this distance between clusters? Um, so this is the whole algorithm. Um, it's the board. Okay, 
So right, so what is a good um, what is a good distance between um, two clusters? So you can probably think of some things that you're, you're probably... Something greater using. than 10 times the smallest or something like that? What, so, so let's say you have two clusters. Say this cluster and this cluster. What's the distance between? So I need to find a distance, not a, not a threshold on the distance. But I don't even define, you know, how uh, So I heard one person say, um, <coughs> um, distance between centers. Um, so this is good, but I need to define what is the center of the cluster. So 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 how do I define define the center of the cluster? We have a subproblem which also has a lot of right answers. Right? Um, the centroid. Um, so the centroid uh, so the okay I, I forget all the different notions, but the, the centroid is, I, I believe is the same thing as the, as the mean or the average um, of, of all the points, right? So the same way you can average numbers, you can average average points, take up all the coordinates and just take the average of all of them. So the centroid of this cluster may be here, and this one would be here, and this would be, be a distance, right? Um, so there are other other possible notions of the center of a cluster. Although this is maybe the most most obvious one. Um, so you can say the um, the center point of minimum enclosing. Um, ball. This is known as the M E B. So, which is the building over there. Um, so, if I, if I have a cluster, there's a single ball, which is which is the smallest ball, which contains all the points, right? So, so if you only have two points, it's going to be the same thing as an average, because these things are going to be right here. But if you have three points, it may be slightly um, slightly different. Um, if you have for instance, if your cluster is points like this, then the centroid is going to be over here. It's, it's going to be pulled a little bit by this point, but not too much. Um, but the minimum enclosing ball is going to look like kind of like that. It's going to be a little bit rounder. Uh, and then the center is here. Right? So, so what, what is the difference between these two points? This, this one, the centroid, is capturing the mass of most of the points. Um, this one is saying that um, I want to say I want to capture all of the points. I don't want to leave uh, leave anything out. Right? This centroid is really ignoring this point to um, this point to some extent. Whereas the minimum closing ball is not ignoring, saying I can't ignore that point. So maybe you would you would start with this cluster, and then you would eventually add this point because all the other points are over here. And now you want to take the distance, you may take this point instead of this point. Um, and so it, it's describing different properties of the cluster. It depends whether you want to be all-inclusive or talk about the, the center of the, of the mass, which is what the mean or the center is saying. Um, there's also... Um, Um, this 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 class of of objects um, they're called multidimensional mediums. So the, so 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 who has heard of um, robustness properties of the medium versus the mean? So so is this so, um, is this such that oh, okay? So so maybe I'm just being vague, right? So um, so if you if you, if you look in in one D. And you take a set of, of points here, and you have one point 
out here, right? Now, the, the, the mean of these points may be something like this. It gets pulled over by this point. Um, whereas the median is going to be in between these two points here. So if you have most of your points here and you have an outlier, the median is still going to be stable with respect to outliers, whereas the mean can be pulled away by this one point. Um, so if this, if this is really an outlier and you don't really care about it so much, then, um, then as this point gets really far, further and further away, the mean is going to get pulled with it, whereas the median is not. So um, the median is um, robust, which is a statistical term that means that as, as you have what fraction, it has to do with what fraction outliers of the points you need to be outliers before your representative becomes uh, really far away from where the where the non-outliers are. Um, there's some more technical way to find it, but that's basically what I'm saying. So I could also try and so now the 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 mean generalizes in the, the very standard way to higher dimensions, whereas the median does not. Um, there are multiple ways you can generalize them, and they don't all have quite as nice properties as the median in one dimension. But there are various ways to define these, these multi-dimensional medians. But there are ones known on this one called the center point, there's the half space median, there's the L1 median, and, and a variety of these things. But they have the property that even if you have one outlier, they stick to the center even more than um, the mean does. So the, the mean point may actually end up being kind of over here, and it's still pretty representative, but it's not in the middle of the set, whereas a multidimensional median may be further in the middle, and may in some way be with some better form representative. And then the, the minimum and closing ball is, you know, is, is, uh, is even more susceptible to outliers, but in some cases that's what you want. You want to capture all the points that could be in this closing. Right, so if you had one other point over here, you want to say, well, this is very close to the points in the, in the cluster. I want to add this in because I have this point. But if you are using the mean or the median, you say, well, it's still pretty far away. Why would I want to extend my cluster out there? But really, your cluster is already out there. So sometimes you do want to use this minimum closing ball type representative. Um, right, so there, there are lots of choices for what it means to be the center. And so, when we talk about the assignment-based clustering um, next, will these these centers will actually be you know a very important part of this, and the way you choose them will really uh, will really have a lot of effect on the, on the algorithm and how you do it and what properties it has. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So so this was the distance between the centers was one way of distance between the clusters, but it's not the only way to the, do the distance between clusters. So maybe after you saw this example here, right? Let's say all the points inside this big red circle are, um, are inside the cluster, and this point is not. What would be a good distance between these clusters? The minimum of all distances of pairs between four clusters. Um, yeah, right. So, or you could probably just say the minimum because it's it's uh, discrete. But um, um, the minimum um, distance of um, of x and c one, um, x two and c two. Um, So if you took had, had two two clusters, look at all the points pairs between them, and um, um, find the smallest distance. So this is known as the minimum or um, so I guess this is known as the single link clustering. Um, And the idea is, if there's one close distance between 
the clusters, then you should connect. So you, you're doing these one at a time, and this is finding, you, you essentially are sorting all distances between points, and if this is the shortest distance, which is not inside the cluster already, then you join together the two clusters. Um, so, so well, we're using this minimum here, but if you're looking at the distances between the individual objects instead of instead of the centers of the clustering, there are lots of variations of this, right? Um, you could say instead of the minimum, um, the maximum. distance x, x1, x2, um, or x1, <coughs> x1 and c1, and x2 and c2. Right, so you can take the maximum distance instead. Um, so the reason you do this is these have two very different, different properties. Um, this one will allow your clusters to kind of, um, as long as there's like a chain of data connecting parts of it, it'll allow it to join together, where this the maximum distance will ensure that the clusters stay very compact and round. It has to be close to everything in the cluster before you add it, instead of just something close. So you could think of having two, um, um, two data sets um, where one looks like, you know, or some data set like this. And the mineral link, uh, this single link clustering, you will allow you to join all of these, these points together with edges and create this as a single cluster and then this as another cluster. Um, whereas if you use the maximum distance instead, you, will, you won't be able to find these two clusters. Right? So, so I'm not sure when you would actually ever get data that looks quite like this that you would need to clustering. But, in a lot of papers on clustering, people have examples that look like this, and they show that you can find two clusters like this using something like the minimum distance. But at the same point, this minimum distance is very susceptible to noise. Um, say you had a lot of these points here, but you also had a few points not too far apart that kind of link these two together. So these were pretty sparse, but enough that you would connect these two without a very big distance. So it's not really worrying about what the what the density is, and so there, um, so, so there are versions of this that look at the density of the clusterings that allow you to to, to, um, to join them as well, and there are variations kind of in between. But the, the, there, you know, these are the density ones are a little bit more more complicated. Um, so let's see. Um, So you can also look at instead of the minimum or the maximum, you, you, um, you can also look at the average, um, the average distance as well. And this will have similar properties to the maximum, but not maybe not be quite as uh, susceptible to be um, to worry about all the points. Um, and then um, and then other versions are. The, the distance could be um, the radius of the M E B of C1 union C2. Right, so if I have two, two clusters, then the distance, if I take the smallest enclosing ball that encloses both of them, and I look at this, this radius, this is going to be my distance. So if you're, if you're thinking of the, the um, so if you go back to thinking about the width of this cluster, and you can measure the width somehow based on the minimum closing ball of it, then you want the minimum closing ball of your resulting cluster to be small. So this is a way of telling you, um, you know, how, how big this width is becoming if you're joining together these two clusters into a single cluster. Right, so you can see there, 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 there are lots of variants of this, and it depends on what you're kind of looking for in your, in your cluster. And they have different advantages in, you know, in different cases. Um, 
Okay, so, so this, if you have a distance for clustering, choose, choose any one of these distances, then you can easily figure out what is the closest to, to clusters. Um, I still have this question of this um, close enough, right? So th th this is another question you have to answer, and you really need some sort of um, threshold. So, so you have to have some parameter that says when are um, I can join them if they're close enough, and I should stop at some point. Um, and there's there's really um, no way around this. Um, there, there. Um, so there are ways based on on the density of clusters. The density becomes too high, but you need this threshold on the density. Um, there are these um, Bayesian ways of doing clustering, which are supposed to be non-parametric, right? Um, and what they do is they do something like a Dirichlet process, and they add clusters if you need them to capture the data. But the Dirichlet process has a Dirichlet parameter, and this ends up affecting your threshold. Right? There's no way around not having a threshold. Sometimes you say, I'm going to have k clusters if I stop when I have k. K is a very obvious threshold. You need some threshold here in order to know when to stop. Um, so, but there, there are some ways, so, so if you need this threshold, then what you want is some way of defining the threshold that is not too um, sensitive to the data or the clustering algorithm or somehow capturing, you know, somehow determining the right place to stop. Um, so, so if you just set k ahead of time, and let's say that your So for instance, let's say that your data looks like looks like this, and you set k equals two ahead of time, right? So well, the thing I want to do is I want to make you know these three separate clusters, but if I set two, I'm going to have to join these two together, and they really should be joined together. So just you know blindly setting ahead of time is you're possibly going to do some weird things, right? So you want to you have a way of setting this threshold so that it um, it's it's stopping at some point wisely in some way that the data is telling you. Okay.